And yeah. somehow or other, this is hardwired into our brains, into our hormones, into our biology. And, you know, the, the, you know, the and this is really kind of, you know, the kind of the philosophy underlying all these dating books like the rules. And I actually heard an interview with one of the rules authors in which they talked about, uh, you know, women can chase jobs and apartments, uh, but not men. It's biology. So mm -hmm. in the book, I kind of dug into this idea. Well, is it really biology? And the, the, the scholar who for the longest time has been pushing that argument and upon whose research others like David Buss and other, other you know, biologists who focus on mating and dating, um, you know, they, they're kind of acolytes of, of this, of this gentleman. But the, the, the guy who started all this is a scholar named uh, Robert Trivers. And it's understandable to me why, um, you know, people in the dating space would be attracted to Trivers because he's, his reputation is that he's um, the foremost evolutionary biologist of his generation. The problem, you know, it's kind of problematic. Like his, his reputation as a scientist, I would say, is, is problematic, particularly in, in today's world. And I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll tell you why. So, a couple of years ago, it was revealed that he had been accepting, uh, that Trivers had been accepting research funding from Jeffrey Epstein, the sex offender financier. And here is what, what Robert Trivers told the Journal of Higher Education when confronted with the fact that, he, that his research funding was coming from, from Jeffrey Epstein. This is the quote from Trivers. By the time they're 14 or 15, they're like grown women were 60 years ago. So I don't see these acts as so heinous. So the, this is the kind of, 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 you know, higher mind that yeah. people in the dating space have been kind of revering for all these years. And even worse, or not, not even worse, but it, additionally, most of these theories have been thoroughly debunked by yeah. mostly female evolutionary biologists over the past 20 years. Scholars like um, Patricia Gawati at UCLA, Sarah Hurdy at UC Davis, um, Zomaya Tang Martinez at University of, of Missouri. And, and Gawati's story is really interesting. She had been studying the mating behavior of Eastern bluebirds for years. This was her like initial focus of research. And bluebirds are supposed to be monogamous, at least during mating season. But which what she found is that the female bluebirds were actually flying away at night to mate with other male bluebirds. Um, and when she published her research, um, you know, the, all the male scholars, you know, were, were skeptical. And one of them actually told her that the bluebirds in her study must have been raped. Um, so she, she, she eventually became fed up with this and she decided to kind of replicate the seminal study that Robert Trivers had used and had based his own conclusions about mating behavior on. And the seminal study involved the mating behavior of fruit flies. Now, now we can, the, I mean, we have to acknowledge to begin with that the whole idea of drawing big conclusions about human behavior based upon what fruit flies are doing, like mm -hmm. in a, in a, <laughs> you know, like in a lab is, is pretty iffy, but she and three colleagues replicated the original fruit fly experiment, experiment to a T and in the original experiment, um, you know, the, 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 the male fruit flies were the only ones, the, the male fruit flies moved to the females, not the other way around. And not all the males got to mate. And the, you know, the, the, the female fruit flies, you know, were willing to share a male fruit fly alpha with, you know, with their, with the other females. So, Gawati and her and her colleagues replicated the study exactly. And what she found is that the that the this initial study that people had been basing their conclusions on for 40 years was complete garbage. The female mm -hmm. fruit flies moved towards the male fruit flies just as often as vice versa. And the the, the research or the the findings that the 20% of the males had no, you know, weren't, um, you know, weren't procreating was wrong as well. And you know, th there's this phenomenal book. You know, um, 
Inferior by Angela Saini, who's a, a science writer in, in London. And, you know, the, it isn't all about mating. It's, it's about all the different ways that science has gotten women wrong over the years. But mm-hmm. there's, this, there's this hilarious interview that she does with Robert Trivers in which she um, she confronts him about all this. Uh, and, um, you know, and he, at one point towards the end, after he, after Angela saying he completely beat him up, you know, he acknowledged, well, you know, Patty's a good, a good scholar. She's probably right. Well, if she's probably right, everything you've written over the past 40 years and everything your acolytes have written over the past 40 years is nonsense. So there's, yeah, there's junk in, junk out on a lot of these studies. Um, I want to touch one more time on the rules for a second, not to yeah. give that book too much credit because I had it, but we got to take a quick break and we'll be back right after this. Uh, and we are back and you brought up the rules and a lot of our listeners probably don't remember that book because it's probably, I don't know, 30 years old now, 80s. Is that an 80s book? But yeah, it really I, I, set back a generation of women because the premise of the book is, spe- is essentially that men want to chase and play hard to get, like you said earlier. And as I've said on this podcast before, um, men do not want to chase. Men want to pursue. And the difference between chasing and pursuing is chasing is going towards something elusive. Pursuing is going towards a destination with a purpose. And that's what the women need to do is sort of say, here I am. This is the bar. Step up and try and, and get it. It's on the woman to let him let the man know she is interested, she is available, and the right guy who does the right thing can date her and can be with her. And I think, you know, women were sort of trained to never, you know, let your guard down or never let him know that that's what you're thinking or or that shows weakness. And and it really messed up, um, you know, maybe two generations of women. Yeah, if it were only one book that came out in the 80s, you know, yeah. it might not have messed up the dating culture so much. But I think I think Fine and Schneider ended up writing four of these books. And more importantly, I would say 90% of the dating books for women that have been published since then are essentially copycats of the rules. Um, yeah. You know, there are these very elaborate step-by-step um, versions of 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 playing hard to get very complicated. So it's yeah. not just this one book. It's every book that's followed in its wake. Yeah. Even Steve Harvey's book still has a lot of that in it. You know, yeah. think, think like a man or a woman. Okay. Back to your book. Cause that's what we're trying to get here. Um, your, uh, I know it's a strange world to be releasing and promoting a book. Now you're, uh, confident in the message this time you're not going to in two years be like, no, I wish I wrote this. I wish you feel like I think this is the solution. No, I, I actually think this book is great. And if, if you're choosing, <laughs> if you're if you're choosing between buying this book um, or uh, buying my first book, Datanomics, um, you know, one of the things I like to say is that the preface of um, of Make Your Move is kind of a Datanomics season one recap. So you can just buy Make Your Move and and uh, skip the first book if you, you know, well, if you only want to buy one. Because I remember when you were when you were working on this book and, and we sat down in New York because yeah. you wanted to talk to me about, yeah. you know, great love debate stuff and, and my thoughts on the, on the dating landscape. I felt like you hadn't quite formulated it in your head. And then when I read the book, you have you got it, you nailed it, put it all together. When did it sort of come together for you in, in the writing process? I mean, that's sort of a writer's, you know, little writer's how the sausage gets made thing. But was there a moment when you're like, I think I I have this. I, I I think what you've observed is says more about me than um, than like the my writing process. I, I think I just am much uh, better at expressing myself, um, you know, on paper than I am in conversations. Although hopefully I'm doing a good job right now. Yeah, you're doing a good job right now. Was there any worry? Because I get worried because I get people say, "Oh, you need to write a book about this and this." Were you worried that the dating landscape and the way everything is moves so quickly that 18 months from now, you're going to be like, oh man, that's dated. Well, n- no, I mean, I, you know, I, there is some stuff about COVID in the book, but I tried to, you know, keep it, you know, keep it to a minimum because, you know, a book is not a magazine article. Um, a book has to be 
it, it, magazine articles might be written for the here and now, but a book has to be timeless. And uh, I couldn't assume that what we're experiencing right now will be what we're experiencing a year from now or or five years from now. Um, you know, I'd say my my bigger concern about the book is, you know, as you know, I have a very negative take on online dating. Yeah, and um, I, I believe strongly in my opinions, but at the same time, we have a generation of young people who really, for a lot of them, the only dating they know is online dating. And you know, I just in terms of sales and marketing, I just I worried I worried a little bit that um, that this message wouldn't wouldn't work for for a generation who only knew online dating, right. Um, have you online dating's here to stay? So it's not, you know, we, we, our whole tagline for seven years with Great Love Debate was always get your head out of your apps. Well, but I, we can't pretend that it's, it's, temper- it's a real thing. You know? It's a, it's, it's a real thing, but, you know, hopefully I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, make it less of a thing. That's my goal. Um, so your number one, uh, you, uh, do you have daughters? Do I even know this? I have three sons, but I do have a female golden doodle, um, and she's a big fan of the book. <laughs> she she was my writing, she, she was my writing companion throughout the whole process. And the, so the sons, um, do they know dad's um, opinion on dating and what they should do? And they're going to be like, "This is awesome, dad. We're never going to have that to grow out." <laughs> um, yeah, people always ask me, "Well, what does your wife think about all this? Uh, yeah. Like, what is, you know, does she think it's weird that you write these dating books?" And and she doesn't care. She uh, she actually has a very important job, and and she's very busy all the time. Uh, but it's the kids who who were not fans of this like midlife career change. And they, they, they think it's like a midlife crisis for me. Um, yeah. And they, they, Are you they leaving mom. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I don't know if it's quite that far, but, um, but they, you know, they, they initially were, were more than a little bit embarrassed by this whole thing. And they wanted me to go back to writing about oil and gas. Uh-huh. <laughs> but um, I think over time they've, they've rolled with the punches and, um you know, my, I, I have, my oldest kids are, are identical twins wow. and w- one of them is very straight. He's kind of a serial monogamist and the other one's actually gay. So uh-huh. the, the one who's gay, you know, he, this, all this stuff is completely irrelevant for him. Uh-huh. And he, but, but what's funny is he goes to Boston university, which is one of the, the, the very lopsided uh, colleges that wrote about in datanomics. Uh, you know, it's, it's 60, 40 with uh, women to men, which means three women for every two men. And, you know, we, we have this kind of joke about how he gets none of the benefits of this. Um, the, the other one, you know, I, I think he, you know, he, the other twin, he kind of rolls his eyes every time I, I, um, you know, I try to offer advice. And then my youngest, who's 15, he, you know, he, he tries to keep his personal life away from his parents. Well, you know, the good thing uh, from, from your wife's perspective is at least you're trying to understand the mindset of, of women. And, you know, it's, you're always learning your partner and learning what you can do better. I, I think that helps, you know. Is this going to be yeah, a trilogy? I, I, is it going to be a trilogy? I don't know. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'll, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I actually have a ghostwriting project I'm working on right now, so this will give me a little bit of time to figure out what you know what's next for me after that. Um, you know, I I didn't know right after Datanomics came out that there would be another book, so you got to give me a few more months at least to decide if there's going to be another dating book. Yeah, it took me a while to um, to agree with you. I think on datanomics, I think it was a little bit too. There's there's some numbers there, and you say like women should go to you know um, Seattle, Silicon Valley, and Denver, and those are three of our worst dating states. Because yes, the 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 men there, there are more college educated men, but none of them are guys you want to date. So yeah, I, 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 mean, thought it didn't, I, I thought it didn't account for that. Yeah, I mean, we can quibble over the actual numbers, but. As I said, more generally, I don't feel like that, like the the, the move stuff, move to a different location right. part of the book. I, I, I'm, 
I have regrets. Let's put it that oh, way. Because I know. I, we tell people to move every seven years. If you're not, if, yeah, if there's not going to hold you down. Yeah, I, I, but, but, I, but I, you know, like I said, it's just not realistic to expect a 40 year old woman with a whole life in Boston or DC or Miami to just pick up. 